Hi there, it's Polly here. Wee! Pride Month, so I have the unicorn glass of my people and uh, the flag of Fredonia. Yay! Mm -hmm. Found some good games. Some that I've actually been enjoying playing. Um, I love finding um, solo games. There's some very clever solo board games at the moment. And here is a goodie. So this is Night Fighter Ace. Now I'm going to do two games in review together. There's Night Fighter Ace, but oof, it is paired with Interceptor Ace. Very, very similar systems by the same designer, so I will do them together as one review. So, what are these? These are solo board games. And so Night Fighter Ace is a game of you are playing a German night fighter pilot character during the British nighttime bomb offensive in um, World War II. It specifically covers kind of 42, oh sorry, 43 to 44. Um, not the final got a dumb wrong, but um, it's a long game if you want to play the whole uh, campaign. Uses um, 2d6 and a d10, which come in the box. It's got a host of cool little counters, but it doesn't actually snow you down with too many. And it's got some, some nice little aspects. So I have been playing this one. So, uh, 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 that's a bit of the box. So, um, one of the cool things about uh, night fighter combat is uh, I love the difference between all of the different marks of um, bomber. Uh, sometimes when you look at them on a... Um, a series of just sheets like you can't really tell the difference in games like this that starts to shine through those minor differences it's it this is a game of night fighter combat very often it's the electronics suite that's evolving and sometimes the guns and um armor and armament combos as they begin to find what does and doesn't work so um we've got some very cool components in here so there are um it comes with bags and so on in here. Um, there are counters. There is a combat card deck. Um, a very useful thing. And if you are interested, you can play actual historical aces. They've got cards here for... Um, must be a hundred different historical aces here. So you can start off as you want. You know, if you feel like playing an actual ace, you can play these guys already, and it's got their skills and their special bonuses. I think that's cheaty pants myself. It's perfectly balanced to get you off and running. So you've got like a couple little sheets that you're playing with. There's a crew record sheet, which is really a place where you place some counters that record what your current rank is. You are tracked for your experience. You gain experience points as you complete missions. Um, and you gain prestige points as you receive awards. So you record those on here. Now, experience points are used to purchase new skills for your character. There's a host of these. You can get become a, a better shot. You can become way better at air maneuvers. You can become better at um, landing because you know, landing at night instruments only is dangerous. You can pick up things on, oh, um, you can become a better marksman. You can become an expert in a range of aircraft. Um, so the Messerschmitt 110 is a range of aircraft. The Ju-88 188 series is a range of aircraft. Um, you know, um, Dornier 17, come 217, um, etc. So you can become an expert you know, in flying that particular range. You will also have crew in this game. At um, you've probably got a Funker, you've probably got a um, a radio operator who is also your radar operator, and in some aircraft you might have a tail gunner. They are also characters, they also gain experience, and they have their own series of skills that they can get, and often this will help the team. Your Funker, if he becomes very, very good at maintaining the equipment and so on, you'll get less electronic breakdowns, or if they happen, he can fix them. You might want a tail gunner It's really um, a bit of a marksman, but he can also help out with maintenance and with you know, flight prep and all this sort of stuff, so yeah, interesting. Um, there's an operations map. Operations map. You are tracking things on it, like what the state of the moon is and um, these sorts of things. Um, I found that wasn't wildly necessary. Um, and, but the fun. Um, so what you get is 
you get these sheets for aircraft. Sorry, they're a bit shiny. Um, you'll have the type. What is this one? This is a JU88C6C. So da da. Um, it's got a series of um, boxes here. Depending on what base you're in, this records how long it takes you to get to certain interception areas. Um, it also it's got a damage track, and it's got the suite of information about your aircraft. Uh, each aircraft has its own speed. Um, they've got armament, different armament packs. Some of them have um, ammunition tracking requirements. Some don't. They just say for the purpose of a sortie, it's infinite. Um, you tend not to run out of machine gun ammo. You tend not to run out of some of the 20 mil cannon have you know, many, many hundreds of rounds. But sometimes, like some of the heavier stuff, the 30s and so on, you've only got three or four um, points of ammo. And every time you open up with the guns, you expand a point of ammo. So you do have to watch the ammunition on that. It's also got the um, electronic suite. And this can be quite sophisticated. Um, there's out and out radar sets of better and better acuity as the war goes on. There are also some interesting little things like there's infrared sensors for helping you track bombers um, heat at night. Um, there are landing assists um, to help you find your base in the dark and land upon it. Um, and uh, homing devices and these sorts of things. So. Um, things that help stop you getting lost which is a, a bit of a problem flying around at night but there is an electronic war going on so as the as the months go by you suddenly find that um, that radar set isn't working anymore or that um, the uh, certain bands are being jammed and so on so you know oh, oh but I've got a really good aircraft but now oh, the electronics don't work right you can use prestige to either swap up to a uh, for a single prestige point you can swap up to a a different aircraft in the same um make so i can go from one model of ju88 to another if i've got enough prestige in total as in the total number that i've accrued over the game to qualify because the good planes only get to go, go to the good pilots um i can spend two points of of my prestige pile and I can spend that to swap to a new range of aircraft I've been flying ME 110s I don't like it anymore I'm really really crying out to um, fly the uh, uh, the fuck of uh, Uhu so all right you know yeah I'm saving my points for the Uhu um, yeah I don't like Uhus but what the hell um, you can also spend prestige points to ask for a transfer to another base now you've got these um, We've got these little mission log sheets. Um, this is partially filled out because I've been playing, but uh, that records uh, what week of the month it is. It tells you what phase the moon is in, which gives you some bonuses here and there. Also starts telling you, also starts telling you when some things start kicking in and um, you know certain things don't work. But um, yeah, you, the thing is, you've got some charts and tables that, as the air raids happen during the course of the war it starts evolving as to where the British are going. So sometimes you can find yourself running a bit high and dry. You're in an area that was important once, but now, ooh, the British have got a whole thing on about Pinamunda or they're really hammering Berlin or something. And uh, here I am in France and, um, you know, you're, you're not getting it. So you might want to go always uh, where the, um, the action is. Victory comes off getting a set number of um, victories, essentially. How many, uh, how many things, how many aircraft do you shoot down? There is a very cool little thing at the back telling you what happens and how oh, if you get this many victories, oh, you know, you've, you've adequately served the fatherland, you know, good on you. Um, uh, this one, oh, if you get more, well, you know, you're a bit of a local hero after the war and uh, you end up with a respected kind of position um, um, either in the local government or trying to advise the new Luftwaffe and so on. Or, you know, <laughs> you do brilliantly well. Oh, you get some lucrative book deals and you end up as a Hollywood advisor. Um, <laughs> You finally, you finally die in 1963 in a car crash with, with, uh, with your um, your third wife sort of in the back of the car seat with you. Woo! But um, yes, they're having a bit of fun. So, how the game runs. 
you take a um, D20 initially and you can you randomly generate what your home base is and you have to take one of the aircraft that's initially being flown by that um, by that Yasta from that base. You can pick, um, but I think it's all in the sense of fun if you roll. More on that later. So there are the aircraft sheets. They're actually marked. The ones that you can take at the start have a yellow band across the top, so it's easy to sift through because there are a lot of them. Um, these are all these are all aircraft that you can take. It's about must be about fifty of the blighters. Um, so you pick your aircraft. Just take some counters and you just mark down um, what your rank is, what your current prestige is, and little marker for your aircraft goes into your hangar box. Ta-da! And you um, put a little marker up there to remind yourself of what um, Yasta and base and so on you are in. You can choose whether you're going to be a, um, a commissioned or non-commissioned pilot. The non-commissioned pilots start off, they get a little bit of um, actual expertise points at the beginning. It's not really enough, it's not enough to buy any skills straight out, but it does give you a little head start in the skills because you've been um, kind of in the system for a bit and you've, you've learned some stuff, man. Um, however, the officer pilots later on down the track, it's a little bit easier for them to get prestige. People pay more attention to them. However, the um, non-commissioned ones, because they're good at working the system, they're very good at finagling things so that their aircraft uh, tend to get repaired more easily. And it's more easy for them to find good replacement crew. Um, normally, if like your, your Funker or your, your um, tail gunner you know, gets injured and you have to, um, oh, well, I've got to swap up to a new guy because he's going to be out for like a couple of months, you just get like a straight, fresh character. Ah, the NCOs! Are pretty good at flipping through the personnel files and getting the guy who's actually the marksman assigned to their plane. So, um, and yeah, these abilities all change and increase as they go up. So, um, that's your first choice. Now, um, when it's time to launch, so each thing is done as a um, a um, a night's cruise, a nightly cruise. Um, you have your mission log, and it's got a set number of sorties that you make during the month. Um, on each sortie, it will tell you what phase the moon is in. So what you do is you roll for weather. That's going to affect how easy it is to land. But sometimes you could be fogged in. Oh! Um, but once you become an ace, you can ignore being fogged in. But the less experienced pilots cannot take off um, when it's crappy, crappy weather. So <clears throat> now the next thing you do is you have to do a little check to see if any of your electronics are um, screwed, if they're not functioning. Which does happen. Um, the more the more you've got, the more likely is that part of it isn't working. However, if you've got a Funker with the right skills, he can modify that. Now, what you do is you roll. Where are the enemy going tonight? Um, so um, they get a target, which is randomly um, created, and this changes month by month by month over the war. As I said, the focus shifts. Um, now, where they're going, and where you are based lets you know how much endurance is going to take to get to the interception area for, for your aircraft. So sometimes you've got to travel a long way to get there. So you haven't got much time actually in the area cruising around trying to find things. But there is another thing that you that starts happening too is spoof um, raids. The British, being cunning dogs, um, they often send in um, mosquito bombers and so on, and they do a fake raid. And they'll or they'll send in um, a few aircraft that are spreading um, tinsel or even towing um, um, reflectors to make it look like there's a big raid coming in another area. And so a lot of aircraft are then vectored to intercept a non-existent raid. So you see if there's a spoof raid and if you got, and um, you know whether you guys fell for it. And if so, you can lose some endurance because you were sent to the wrong area. Hmm. Um, Damn, <laughs> cursed Britishers. Um, but yes, once you're in your endurance boxes, as you move into the first one, you do a check to see if you make an intercept. If you have no radar on board the aircraft, you get a negative to intercept. Um, the better and better radar sets give you a bonus to intercept. The state of the moon uh, gives you an intercept. If it's full moon and so on, it's much easier to make an intercept, um, etc. So you roll, check to see if you get an intercept. If you don't, you move on to the next endurance box, intercept, etc. But if you find someone, aha, 
little random roll again varies depending on the time of the war but um this tells you what you found beginning of the war it could be virtually anything uh, wellington bombers are still being used out there and um, i have to say i love wellington bombers uh, because they're um less of a pain in the ass to shoot down they've only got two engines and um yeah they go down much quicker um the lancasters are in fact butch um they're 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 the hardest thing to shoot down because they take more goddamn damage mm. but you're all to see what it is ta-da there's a little damage a uh, little encounter thing that you put on good uh right it's a four-engined i found a halifax bomber right they've all got uh, they've um, got different little damage tracks depending on whether it's you know two engine wellington or four engine bomber and some of the bigger bombers have got extra squares on this damage track but what you do is as a pilot you decide where am i engaging um i can choose to engage uh, long medium or short range and what is happening once you engage you'll close one band until you've made a close range pass and then you have to break off and come around again but the bomber you might you might lose the bomber particularly if he's corkscrewing um so uh you get a negative hit and everything obviously if you are at long range you get bonuses if you're at close range um uh, but if you're at close range and you hit the bomb bay and he's got bombs on board you can take damage um so anyway choose the range and then uh, you're mucking mr fire <laughs> so you've got this well shuffle combat deck you turn a card from it and it will tell you things on the card uh it will tell you were you spotted before you attacked um if you weren't then you get to fire first uh if you were sometimes the it's simultaneous fire or sometimes the um, bombers um gunners get to fire at you first mm, okay fair enough um depending on the firepower that your um plane has got uh it tells you on the card what damage you've done sometimes this is like um random damage sometimes it's grouped damage group damage tends to be pretty good um you have to have chosen a aim point so you can aim for the wings the fuselage um the gunner um so okay you've chosen your aim point and then you then you roll randomly on charts for each hit the grouped hits like if you've gone for port wing and it's grouped it'll tend to be like grouped around the engines and whatever and you might get a fuel tank <laughs> um if you're hitting the um airframe uh airframes are kind of butch but you do sort of group damage into it so you might chew through the air airframe um you might hit the gunner which is great because it stops him shooting back at you because these things actually really damage you god damn the they can really fling some crap at you um if you've caught them before they've dropped bombs which is the first three um interception boxes on your track then they are fully loaded with bombs if you hit the bomb bay um very good chance that the um aircraft will just go up if you're at close range you've got to roll and see if you take damage it's not highly likely um it's like rolling 2d6 i think two or 12 you take damage fair enough but you do your damage if he's still standing or if he gets a shot back you draw another card and it tells you on there what the defensive fire is if you are closing you, you then move on to your next combat round and keep firing remembering to expend ammunition etc if you yeah, close in he's still there and you have to break off you roll some dice to see if um he um, manages to evade you um you can then try and reacquire him but it takes endurance to do so um you can um break off your sortie and return home anytime you want if you down a bomber or if the bomber gets away from you you can continue on on your endurance track at each motion forward checking to see if you make an intercept there's some interesting little things mm -hmm. if you make a really good intercept roll you are in the bomber stream now this whole game is filled with lots of interesting historical um data and so on all the way through and one of it is little extracts from these pilots saying yeah yeah it was, they literally called it swimming in the stream where they're traveling with the bombers and they can see them like yeah i mean amongst them and they could take down one and then another and another another so this is what happens if you if you get that good roll you're in the stream once you've downed one you can just go for another and another and another you can keep going till you run out of ammunition or take enough damage that you think it's prudent to go home etc um so damage that you can take as the actual um 
night fighter there is some stuff that will basically make it prudent to go home uh you can lose uh you can be hit so that you lose your forward uh weapons or your forward cannon um you can get injuries to any of the crew um you can get a if you get a fuel tank hit uh it can explode and that's game over you just die um not that likely um but if you, they get a fuel tank hit and the bomber is on fire you'll have to bail out um if everyone's unwounded you'll probably all get down safely but you you might uh you might take a wound that'll keep you out for a few sorties um if you get your engine shut out you have to kind of either bail out or try and glide down for a landing when it's time to finally land you land if you've got um damage to control surfaces or if it's crappy weather then uh, that's a negative to a roll you make to land under normal circumstances you should land pretty well um but if the aircraft is damaged or the weather is crappy um bad things might happen but you might have electronic suite that helps us out later on as things go on the dutch bases you have to check and see if you're jumped by mosquito night fighters on the way home um which is um painful <laughs> because now you've got a whole dog fighting thing they get the jump on you and you actually now your tail gunner gets to shoot and try and keep them off but you know you're trying to maneuver for advantage so there's a little thing where you're trying to get advantage and shoot this guy down before he gets you you can also as the british start introducing night fighters into the stream some of the random encounters you get an interception but instead it'll be like mosquito and now you have to roll it's very likely he'll be on your tail because the british electronics was very very good at picking up the german radars and um, german radio intercepts and so on and so you know you, you you have to you have to watch out the dutch station is dangerous however the dutch station is the one that's where yasta um Yasta One operates from, and they're the guys that run the Focke-Wulf Uhu. So if you're an Uhu fan, uh, yeah, you've got to watch out for mosquitoes. Um, as things go on, you get some interesting developments in weaponry as well. And the most important one is um, Schragemusik, um, jazz music. These are cannon that were mounted behind the cockpit, firing diagonally upwards, about 45 degrees. These have their own ammunition track and everything, and these things are vital because when you do an attack, you can, if you've got Shraga music, you can say I'm doing a Shraga music attack. And you always get surprised with it. You're firing from below. You must aim at a port or starboard wing, and it does additional damage um, because of the, the, the angle and, and the surprise. These things were actually so deadly that it was months before the British actually knew that these things existed because no one was surviving the attacks and the few who did they got you know shots coming that have obviously come up or down from below they figured it must have been a climbing attack by frontal weapons and then finally they figured these guys have got this kind of thing so they, they literally come underneath you park and fire up and um yeah you can saw a wing off pretty damn easily i find it vital because you can keep a sortie going for longer I'll, I might have some of these things have a lot of cannon um, rounds for the Shraga music. So, and they still got the frontal armament they always had. So instead of like, all right, well, I've fired my four cannon rounds. For some reason, all I've got is two 13 mil machine guns. But I'm not going to attack bombers with two 13 mil machine guns. I'm going to start taking a lot more damage and I'm dishing out. It's time to go home. But with this, oh well. Once the Shraga music runs out, I'll do some ordinary intercepts with my my forward weapons. So you know your your kill rate's going to go up. Um, at the end of a mission, you um, check to see, uh, do you get any um, awards? Um, first time you shoot down aircraft, you get awards. Um, you get like a... Um, you get Iron Cross third, second, first class, and they will get you prestige points. Uh, um, and as you go up, as you get you know, more and more and more kills, you get all these other awards. You can get the Knight's Cross. There's a... Um, I think it's the German cross or whatever it's just called Hitler's fried egg because uh, that's what it looks like it's a sort of a sunburst and um yeah all these different awards that you can get uh, if you get wounded you get prestige um first time and um your uh every four sorties you get an experience point and that goes for all the crew so um yeah fascinating game you you it's it's simple this is a thing that you can just literally set up on a table and um just come by like every evening or something. Say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do. Uh, I, I'm gonna do a couple of. Um, I'll do a couple of sorties 
and tick it off and see how we go. So I decided to test this one out for you all. And um, so um, my uh, my intrepid buddy, Mr. Snoots, meep, meep, uh, he and I both took pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we rolled. So yes, um, I got um, a French-based squadron and it's flying the um, ME-110 F4. And I was like, what is that? Says, it's just an ME-110. It doesn't have any... Um, it's got no radar. Oh, okay. Nothing special. All right. And it's in France. This little bastard, he gets just a one. So he's uh, in Holland. And what are they flying? So, oh, a JU-88R. So it's got a radar set. Not a great one. Doesn't get you any bonuses, but it does have a radar set. But for some reason, that Dutch base, we're rolling and it's getting all the intercepts. So it's good. So um, we both roll. Where are they going tonight? Oh, my God. Ah, they're going for Pinamunda. Uh, so, um, all right. So I'm taking off from France and I've got what? I've got one turn of, you know, potential intercept. Uh, this guy, what's he got? Oh, five. All right, well, we both roll. Okay, well, um, I've got... Sh <laughs> and we just start roll. So this guy goes up. Good. He's he, into his first box on his first seat. Hi, I'm out of flight school. Beep, 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 beep. Um, <laughs> good. Oh, well, take off. <laughs> off you go. God bless. He uh, goes up. Oh, good. First box. Oh, intercept. What is it? Wellington. All right. All right, I'll fire. Um... <laughs> Uh, fuselage. Uh, I said, oh, like, tell you what, we'll test out the whole thing. So you go for fuselage, I'll go for the wings for the first few intercepts, and we'll see how they go. You know, which is which is better, which works. Here. Bombay blam. Oh, one kill in the first box. One cannon thing. Um, <laughs> his next one, also an intercept. What's that? Halifax. Oh, it comes up. It says, oh, it's in flames. It's in flames. Uh, okay. Um, it's 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 in trouble. It's it's not going down. All right. I think he puts a second. Uh, uh, I think he closes into his close range thing. And uh, uh, yeah, he just like complete soaring the uh, wing off. So down that one goes. Oh, good. Um, nope. No more intercepts. But that's OK. He goes home. Two down on the first one. Me, meanwhile, I'm like, oh, I've got my one box. Do I find anything? Well, I don't have a radar. So um, and it's the dark of the moon when we start off. So it's like a negative to intercept anyway. I'm rolling a D10 and I'm looking for a 10. <laughs> Nope, nothing up here. All right, well, next night. Good, roll. Well, I get sucked in. What? Um, okay, he goes up and like... Dun, da, 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 da. Oh, oh he, he, he's found a Lancaster. <laughs> Come, he takes some damage. Um, but, um, yep, there goes down another Lancaster. <sighs> next night we go up. Good, wait. <laughs> finally, finally, I've got two or three boxes. And find nothing, find nothing, find nothing. This guy like, again, good. I find a Sterling Bomber. Um, oh, Bomber again. That one goes down. He finds a Lancaster. That one's down in flames. Good. Go home. What? You're an ace. You're a good. You're, you're a goddamn ace. <laughs> and I, I think I managed to get through a month with, without ever seeing if the actual guns work on this thing. Um, just it was literally. Um, it is no fault of the game. Incredibly crappy rolling from me, but it was quite funny as as my my friend here. Do, 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 and <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, wait, let's let's take off. Uh, you're sucked in again. Wait. Hold the phone. Have you seen a little grey guy hanging around our airfield? What? Maybe with a truck with some kind of fog machine on it? What? Oh, oh I was the guy who parked some kind of big machines down the end there. Yeah, little, yeah, little guy, big long nose. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, right. Oh, God, God. oh, I'll get you for that. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was absolutely hysterical. And then <laughs> I finally get out there. Do do do. Do It's it's a Lancaster. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> die England of big dog I pull the thing and it's like you've been spotted oh he gets his first um uh he does two hits to you um which is minor pretty minor should be <laughs> so we rolled for it was like um, I think it was like um <laughs> poor engine fire left engine fire boom <laughs> like a guy in the back of the thing goes ah bing bing I'm <laughs> just diving back down. I was like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, God. Englanders. Um, yeah, so it, it was hilarious. Um, you could keep building up your characters. And, and there's even a little thing in there for uh, the plot to kill Hitler. You can get involved in a plot to kill Hitler if you want. Just a little side thing. So that is the Night Fighter game. Now, we have Interceptor Ace. Now, this is the game of day interception against the B-17 streams. Um, now, these B-17 streams uh, move in big, nasty boxes. You are playing a fighter pilot, and again, like the other game, uh, you've got different um, streams of aircraft. There's the BF-109s and the um, 
there's the ME410 variants, and then there's the um, Focke-Wulf um, A variants. You haven't got the Ds, which is a shame because I love focke -Wolf Ds. But, um, so, but you also have a wingman that you're operating with. And so, similar structure, except it's much easier to get intercepts. But there are escorts. Now, as you roll for your um, what you found, there's a chance there are escorts. You've got a problem with the escorts. Are you going to engage the escorts and try and chase them off and then try and engage the bombers? But you might be shot up from doing that, or you might have been put out of position so that you're just not going to do it. Or are you going to do your duty and um, get the Wilmots and um, shoot down bombers, but you might take damage as you do it, because once you're through, you are going to get... Um, jumped by the interceptors you can try and send your uh, wingman off to kind of keep interceptors off your back while you're um, attacking bombers these sorts of things you've got some interception choices to make particularly with your wingman um, your wingman is obviously a character that gets skills just like your crew did in the other game um, he can cover you um, you're usually the lead pilot um, you will take a lot more damage if the B-17s are in a box. Now, some of these aircraft have um, rocket packs that they can fire, and these break up the formations. So the rocket packs pick up the aircraft. Um, you don't want a dogfight while you've got those on. you massively down on speed and maneuverability. But if you um, fire them off, it will break up the formations so that you won't automatically take these sort of you know extra hits that you get if they're in a tight box um so yeah those are really useful um mm. um the i have to say i've been again i start playing this the me 109 is definitely the um you've chosen the high difficulty level if you take the me 109 i do happen to love me 109s but um they're not good bomber killers because it's the Focke Wolfs who've got all of the um, um, cannon, which are great for tearing up the bombers. Surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, the Messerschmitt is the dogfighter. It classes as very agile. That's kind of the one that you want to tackle the um, interceptors. Um, ME410s and so on, I do love them. Um, you really don't want to get stuck in with fighting interceptors in that damn thing either. Uh, um, on the other hand, the variant with the 50 mm cannon is a scream. <laughs> uh, there is a in the Night Fighter one. There's a, I think it's a Ju88. I think it might be a Dornier 217 variant that have got 37 mm cannons, and those are quite funny too. <laughs> um, but um, so similar game, prestige, more and more improved marks the aircraft, etc., etc. A massive, massive, massive aircraft to choose from. Um, which one of the two do I prefer? Um, I like the um, I had to I like the Night Fighter one because it's got more of a kind of a stalky feel to it, um, a bit more kind of shock and panic because there's a surprise of these like suddenly there's um, mosquitoes on your tail, um, and the the kind of electronic warfare thing where yeah yeah I got a cool new thing and I'm doing really well, crap the British have managed to negate every single thing I thought was cool. And now I'm back where I was, so now we've got to try and can I can I get an aircraft that's got something that's going to counter what I'm starting to see on the British. So yeah, I think that's got I think it's got a lot more um, cunning and a bit I think it's a bit more tense. The Interceptor Ace, the daytime one, it's got um, it's more frenetic because it's like here come the bomber stream. Okay, is the aircraft still together? Oh, okay. Um, kind of. Uh, got some gaffer tape. Uh, or oh crap! Here come the Mustangs. So um, it's it, it's a bit more frenetic. These are both really good games. Uh, I think they're beautifully done. Um, the designer has got lots and lots and lots of sort of just little um, side notes telling you why keeping up with the science of the thing and on the history of the thing. In essence, they're a little bit difficult to read through, which is why I've sort of decided to do a pretty thorough. Um, breakdown because uh, it did take me a little while to figure out things like you roll to intercept when you go from the hangar to the first intercept box it didn't make it clear you immediately roll to see if you intercept someone it wasn't like you put it here and then move onwards and you know, little things like that 
there are errata sheets in both of them. It's important to read them because, because in the main body rules, you've got to do things like how long it takes to repair your aircraft. If you take a ton of damage, you might miss a couple of sorties as it's repaired, which is why being like a, um, you know, <laughs> being a Feldwebel who works a system um, it gets your aircraft kind of repaired better or, or more swiftly. Um, so anyway, these are great games. Uh, I really like them. Um, I really like these, you know, the data sheets and everything really actually really brought these aircraft alive. As you see this old, this is a ME110 F4, okay, it's a F4C4? What the hell is that? It's like, oh, you just suddenly see, oh, it's got a Liechtenstein. Hey, it's got a Liechtenstein and it's got a, um, a homing beacon on it. Yes, Queen, I'll do that. Um, yeah, um, um, uh, Mr. Snoots approves of the uh, JU88 series. And um, yeah, great fun. Check these out. Um, links down the bottom. Uh, if you're <laughs> if you're an air combat sort of fan, uh, I, I think these are a good, a good buy and a great find. So anyway, um, if you like the reviews, by all means, please hit like, hit subscribe, um, tell people about the channel. And uh, I will keep on getting hold of cool stuff and um, trying to dig it out for you. Okay, cheers everyone, and I'll see you later. Happy Pride, everyone.